Are we ready? Okay. Let's call this meeting to an order. Roll call. Commission Chair Francisco Vasquez. Present. Commission Vice Chair Joanna Esso. Jesus Cervantes. Um, sorry, just to clarify, <laughs> Commission Chair Francisco Vasquez. Present. Commission Vice Chair Jesus Cervantes. Present. Commission Secretary Joanna Esso. Present. Commission Member jo Juan Duran. Present. He's going to be joined. Oh, yeah, he's already. Thank you. Commission member Sonia Urquiza. Present. Commission chair, we have a quorum. A hundred percent. I want this to be in the book that today we reach a hundred percent of our five members, five members present. Congratulations. <laughs> Feels good. Thank you very much. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, um, Vice Chair Cervantes, lead us in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm a woman of silence. Item number four, call to the public. This is the time for the public to comment. Members of the Summerton Parks and Recreation Commission may not discuss items that are not specifically identified on the agenda. Um, therefore, pursuant to our Senate Revised Titles 38 slash 43101, section G, action taken as a result of the public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter responding to any criticisms or scheduling the matter for further consideration and decision of a later time. Any anyone from the public? Okay. Hello, good evening. My name is Lucisa. I came in yesterday to the, the council meeting and they told me that this is the right meeting that I have to come to. So I we are seeking a sponsorship for my little daughter. Uh, my daughter is 10 years old and she is been dancing since she was three. So the, forever she was always asking us to take her to competition. And we were saying, no, you're too little, you're too little. So finally this year, we decided to take her to, the, well, the dance um, uh, director told us that this year she was ready to go compete. So we took her to her very, very first competition in Phoenix. And on April 25th, I believe, she won first place versus all the Phoenix girls. These girls are homeschooled so that they can go to dance for four, five, six hours a day. So it was it was it was amazing. Not only she won first place with her dance, she got she got a, a crown and she got a title. So the title for this competition for her is uh, Miss DEA Junior Arizona. So with that she got a full scholarship for a full week on, on July 1st to the 2nd, um, she's gonna get um, um, like four days of classes. And after that, she's gonna go through like a very comprehensive um, uh, competition. She's gonna get, I know she's gonna get a, um, she's gonna have to do a comprehensive test. She's gonna have to do an interview. She's gonna have to dance her same dance that she danced here, all that. And she's gonna be representing Arizona. This is in Florida, mm -hmm. July 1st to the 2nd. So everything was perfect dandy because we, we knew how much it was going to be for her competitions here in, in San Diego and in Phoenix. But with that same, we were like, oh, okay, well, we'll, we'll try and make it happen. Um, so yesterday morning, I was just kept on thinking because the, the dance teacher, she was, you know what, we need to start doing fundraisers. We only have a month and a half. And, so then I thought about the city. So that's why I came yesterday and then today, I mean, yesterday they told me to come in today. Um, my daughter is 10 years old. She so she's a fourth grader in CDS. She, she, she's not only a like, beautiful dancer, she is great in school. Um, she, every time she gets on a roll, 
she gets her present and she always gets student of the month. I mean, her, her teacher say that if I need a, a letter of recommendation, so give it to me. Um, even the, the principal, she said that I could ask her. I, I just, to me as a mom, I'm very, very proud. Just thinking that she did this versus Phoenix girls is to me, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, one little girl from Thompson, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that's why I came here. Um, like honestly, anything, we're starting the fundraiser, like hardcore this, this weekend. Um, but honestly, anything, anything would help at this point. We're really um, happy to, to help, right? And we'll discuss that later, but I have a couple questions um, for you. What dance um, classes does she take now, if any? All right now, a week, she takes about 12 hours a week. She takes from um, ballet, tap, jazz, tumbling, which is kind of like um, like cheerleader type of classes. She's also in the in the um, like the DPAC, the company for for dance makers. So she goes out like for example, the last time that they danced here was in the last Christmas. She came in and danced one song for the Christmas for the greater no not not greater day for the Kamal Festival um, before COVID. So they go out and they do things downtown in Yuma. So those are the the, the fifth the fifth the five things that she does. It's really exciting to hear about your daughter and congratulations to supporting her from her passion. And she's only 10 years old and Thank she's you. already accomplished such a huge accomplishment. Yeah. And it's just amazing to hear about it. So congratulations to you too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Also for me, congratulations. It's, um, I think it is amazing, like you said, that uh, she doesn't seem to have, you know, a lot of, um, resources here and then look at what she did. Um, are there any videos? I mean, because I think I would, I love yeah. dance and I would just be happy to, to see, you know, her dancing. Is there any videos? Or yeah, so they, they posted them on, on their website. Um, I have the video with me. I, I can even email it to you so you can see, you can see her. I'll, I'll give you uh, my um, email. Hey, I also want to say congratulations, obviously, for for putting us on the map. I know yeah. how it feels being myself a, a former coach of a rocket club. Yeah. I didn't believe that Summerton was yeah. in this area. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, unfortunately, at this moment, since it's a call to the public, okay, please, please, um, this is our our Parks and Rec director, Jesus Mesa. You're gonna leave your your uh, name and the information needed. And we're going to make sure that we actually place this item for other consideration, which is next month. Mm -hmm. If you can be here and, and uh, have your video, if you want to show us, we have a, our te technician can help you later on with that. Uh -huh. And at that moment, we're going to make a, we'll, we'll, we'll make a, a, a motion in, to yes or no. I'm pretty sure that you, you already know how I'm feeling, how we're going to vote, but at this moment, we're going to make a, uh, okay. But, just leave your information with, with Jesus Mesa, our Parks and Rec Director, and then I hope I'll see you back on June, the third week of June, and, uh, and uh, I hope it's not too late. No. You said that you need to be there on July 1st. July, right. the, the, the classes are July, July 1st through July 7th. Uh, yeah, yeah, so. And you um, want to bring your daughter. Yes, okay. definitely, yes. I wanted to bring her today, but I wasn't really sure about the COVID and the kids and the mask and all that. So I'm like, ah, we'll go, we'll go next time. We're um, little by little, we're opening. And um, so we have a prior event actually a few weeks ago to start going back to normal, uh -huh. you know, per se. So good luck with that. And, and I hope I'll see you in in four weeks from mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Yeah, um, uh, if you can leave your contact information, um, we'll definitely be reaching out. Our next meeting will be June 16th. Mm -hmm. If you want to mark it on your calendar. Yeah, perfect. And yeah. Yeah, you can leave the link and then I can just yeah. do it. Oh, I, I'm going to show up. I, better, I want to show everybody. Better, so, yeah. Better, so it's better yeah. also, right? You can show up to your. Yeah. So just whatever video you want, you want to show, you want to show us, that's, that'll be perfect so we can all see it. At the same time. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah. then I'll see you back on June 16th, mm -hmm. same time, same place. Sounds okay. good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you You're so much. You're very welcome. Okay. Thank you very much.
any anybody else from um, from the public? Okay, thank you very much. At this moment, um, we don't have actually a, a minutes. Uh, our secretary had a personal problem that she couldn't actually uh, have the minutes ready, but she will have them ready for next meeting. Um, let's move on to item number. Uh, we don't have any public hearings. Let's move on to item number seven. Seven point one presentation of certificate of volunteer service parks and recreation commission awarded to Paulina Gonzalez Castello. Um, Good evening, um, I share in members of the commission. Um, this young lady here, Paulina Gonzalez Gastelum, actually helped us uh, in the prior activity that we had with, uh, with uh, uh, the Summerton, um, how do we call it? The block, the block party. The block party. It was a small block party, and uh, she was there from approximately 4.30 to 10.30 until we clean and everything. So I would like to start from now on recognizing the, the volunteerism that exists here in Somerton. And we need to start somewhere. Since she was able, she very kindly donated her own time. She's also a teacher from one of our local schools here. And um, I'm very happy for her health and for the passion demonstrated there because she was really, really into it. She took her job really seriously. Uh, her hands were frozen at one point, I believe, at one point, I believe, but uh, she survived. She still has the, the, um, the full okay. hands. There you go. <laughs> So, Mr. Jesus, we have the certificate. Okay. So, if you would like to, um, okay. I don't know if you wanna. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a picture to make this part of our record and then put it on the Facebook. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> members of the commission, please step down a little bit for the picture, and uh, hopefully next month we're gonna start recognizing more volunteers that are helping us and making a, a difference in our endeavor to make Summerton a better community. Congratulations, Thank you, Mr. Haskins. You're very welcome. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing. We're going to keep you busy, believe me. Don't go nowhere. Thank you very much. And um, on 4th of July, for the 4th of July activity, I hope we can get more volunteers um, because we want to help the community and, and we see that there is a need. And uh, that's what we do, what we do. Okay. Last time on the block party, um, we were able to raise a little bit of uh, cash and uh, we're willing to put it back into the community. Okay. And everything is done through volunteerism. So, once again, thank you for, for helping us and uh, good luck. You're very welcome. Any questions? Uh, no, um, I just, uh, as Mr. Vasquez uh, uh, touched on, thank you for volunteering. Uh, you know, I believe that uh, taking pride in your community and giving back uh, starts with volunteerism. Um, and hopefully, uh, we do expand the opportunities that we offer for our community to volunteer in various events. Uh, because uh, I know that is one of the, the major building foundations for a strong community is having those that were giving back to the community and being involved. But uh, thank you. Um, I don't think I can really uh, say more than that because I mean, 
Uh, but I'll open it to the rest of the commission for any additional comments. And just know that all this volunteer work that we do that you just contribute to, it goes back to me, like positions like we just heard today. Mm -hmm. I hope. And um, Paulina, she's my roommate. Hey. <laughs> and I want to say thank you uh, for her service. Thank you, Paulina. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, any additional comments, uh, Commissioner Duran? Uh, no, okay, uh, I'm fighting here with my phone. Never done a zoom in through my phone, but I just want to say also thank you. Um, I know some of us couldn't be there for whatever reason, but I uh, we appreciate your help. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Vasquez. We still have one more item, and we'll be moving on to item number seven point two, presentation of yard of the month to uh, David Figueroa for the month of April 2021. Mr. Vasquez, Yeah, once again, this time I took a bodyguard um, going to that yard of the month because I wanted to share the pleasure, you know, seeing those yards. And um, Ms. Uh, Secretary uh, um, and historian Joanna Esso was my companionship this time. And we saw a very lovely family, first of all. Uh, um, when we met the, the Figueroa family, it was he was a welcoming, uh, he was a David Figueroa person. He showed us the front and the back of his house. We took some pictures and uh, um, I, I felt really, really, once again, really, really happy to, to, to be part of this commission, to be able to recognize um, a local resident in, in his yard. Definitely he puts the effort into it and beautification and, and that makes the that makes the, the neighborhood to actually look much better when, when they put the time and the effort. So in this case, um, Mr. David Figueroa was not the exception. I mean, having the, the yard well taken care and living in a corner. So um, it was beautiful. Um, what else did I miss? <laughs> well, that's, even the experience of uh, recognizing, you know, that family for, for you know, beautifying our city of Somerton, they still gave to us a bag full of their vegetables <laughs> yeah. from their garden, yeah. and, and they were wanting to just sit and chat with them. I mean, it was just like, we spent like, I think like yeah. 45 minutes oh, yeah. with them. Just, they, yeah. You know, they showed us all of their garden, their flowers, and they gave us a history of how they planted them and why, and it was just a beautiful experience. Beautiful experience, beautiful family. Uh, um, it actually touched my heart when... And they happen to be from the same place that I grew up. I grew up in the city of Nogales, and, and um, they, they have also. Um, anyway, so they brought some trees from that area, and uh, they planted here, not surprised or not, but they, they have uh, actually a peach tree that actually grows in there. And it's a struggling, but they are taking care of those trees. Uh, so beautiful. It was a beautiful experience. So at this moment, um, um, I would like to make the motion to recognize the, the yellow demand to David Figueroa, for April 20, 2021 to May 2021. 20, any, any questions? No, um, I, I hope that uh, all of our residents do uh, consider at, at least nominating themselves or their neighbors for the end of the month. Um, and it doesn't have to be uh, a lush green yard with grass. It can, that be a desert landscape, you know, the, it, that's not the, the primary driver to have grass. Mm -hmm. What we're looking for is that you take pride in your yard, uh, keeping it up, uh, making it a shining example mm -hmm. in the neighborhood so that others may follow. Um, mm -hmm. we, we do encourage our, our uh, residents to participate if, if, if possible. But, uh, that's and now that you brought this up, um, the funny thing is in front of his house, there was actually the city of something was actually uh, working on a sewage problem that was across just yeah, in front of his, uh, they closed the street there because for a leak or something like that. And, and uh, but nevertheless, I mean, uh, the providence of, you know, taking care of his yard was there. And he felt like, oh my God, you know, I apologize for this. And uh, no, I mean, 
So exactly um, echoing your what you're saying, you know, um, the owner taking pride of his, his his brand in the back, and and usually one thing that I found in common, the the three the three uh, people that we that we have recognized in the past, they they also not only take care of the, the front yard but also in the backyard. Okay, it's like the whole the whole home is it's not just. I guess it's not like my house. It's, I do have a little bit of junk on the back, but they don't. They really take care of it. Started. I'm getting, getting, yes. getting the yeah. Believe me, that thanks to this information, I'm <laughs> changing and switching to a little bit more beautification of my whole house as a whole. So, um, so I would like to make a motion to recognize um, um, the year of the month uh, to David Figueroa at this moment, please. I need a second. If there is no question. Uh, second the motion. Thank you. Motion and a second. Uh, I'll put it to vote. Uh, those in favor of awarding the April 2020 Yard of the Month award to Mr. David Figueroa, uh, signify with an aye. 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 Uh, those who oppose, same. Ayes have it. Uh, motion carries. And the April 2021 Yard of the Month goes to uh, Mr. David Figueroa and his property. He'll be a very happy camper, so thank you very much. And once again, also, uh, um, if you know, uh, if you see a, um, a yard that cuts your attention, you know, I will stop by and I will say, hey, I like your yard. And it's when we introduce each other and also the, the opportunity to uh, to know the, the members of this community. They, they have so much to give. and. Uh, we're not just in a sleeping community, so we were very proud of Somerton. And, and this person, he was like really, really proud of, you know, he chose to live in Somerton, and that was it. He said, you know, I could have lived in Yuma, but I like the community here and the people. And now with this, it's like, I'm going to stay here forever. So I, go, thank you. <laughs> so I felt like we were doing something really positive. So once again, thank you very much. And Can you tell them how, and you we have visitors today so then we just let them know how they can nominate too they can yeah. nominate someone how to do it we did one of the things that i noticed on the web page we're actually having the yard of the month right there and also in facebook because i've seen it in our city uh, uh, i mean the parks and Rec commission so i wonder if we can also include it like a little bit on the on the city's uh, you know under the city's web page to uh or if we can include a little bit. Sometimes, you know, the, the water bill has an information there, you know, like as the, I don't know, the city council, they cannot also put a, you know, we invite you to, you know, for the program. This is a program that is, that few people feel, actually, when I removed the sign from the prior yellow demand, she said, oh, my school teacher, don't, don't take, I feel bad. <laughs> We have to give it to the next person. So that tells me that they are appreciated, that they're, they're in the front yard is recognizing it. It's really, really good. You know? Let me add, are we going to recognize the year of the month in person? So we can coordinate with our graphic designer for picture. And Perfect. Marketing, social media. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, let's get together and, and uh, set a date. I will talk to Mr. David Figueroa so we, we can actually, like in the prior, Prior to the other two houses. I just want to add that uh, on behalf of the department, we're going to start a concept, a new concept every month, and posting a picture on social media just to promote our landscapes and the different plants and like of uh, vegetation that is um, growing here in the city. We're just going to call it um, Plan of the Month. We're going to start this month. Hopefully, it's going to tag along and help with um, promoting landscaping, mm -hmm. maintenance of the yards, and of course this this program. The library actually, um, uh, last year, two years ago, two years ago and last year, they offer a, a guest speaker about, uh, you know, the plants that we can actually grow here in Summertown, the benefits of the desert plants, and, you know, the, the, the water can be saved and all that stuff. So at this, we have seen actually, like, you know, uh, the, the first recipient of the Yellow Demand having the desert desert uh, uh, theme, and then the second one more greenish, 
Um, so it, it is good to actually go into those 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 different uh, uh, types of um, um, plants because one takes water, the other one also looks very nice. But you know, but they will be great to start promoting more. Yes, we will promote whatever we maintain as a department. You know, what we can do is just tag along the, the application and the invite. Every time we do, we're, we're just going to add it with the information on the background of the plant. Basically, just a paragraph of summarizing the the description of the plant. Mm -hmm. Something that hopefully is going to help. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vasquez. Uh, and I return the seat of uh, chairperson back uh, to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Vice Chair um, Cervantes. Okay, let's move on to all business. All items are for discussion and possible action. Um, item 8.1 discussion of Section 2.9 of the Summerton Parks and Recreation Commission related to the commission allowing appointment to two non-resident members, Ms. Uh, uh, Secretary Historian Joanna Esra. I would like to make the motion to table this item until further discussion with the city mayor. Okay, since you're the one presenting this, I don't see a problem. Um, I'm just making a motion to table the, the item for further discussion, she would like to uh, First, I will talk to our city uh, mayor, which I don't see a problem with that. So let's, I will like, I will second that motion. Okay, to table this item until Ms. Uh, Secretary uh, uh, Joanna Esso um, has a chance to talk to our mayor. Questions? Okay. Oh, I just. I don't think I have any need just with uh, tables, there's no, there's no need uh, for a vote. So I'm going to table the item and, um, for next month. Okay. Um, okay, let's move on to item 8.2. Update of the status of Centennial Park pathway in relation to lighting issue at the site. Oh, yes. Thank you. Good evening, um, Commission Chair, um, members. This is Nathan Parks and Creation Director. Just want to mention that um, regarding your, your inquiry for the pathway um, close to Centennial Park all the way to um, Chevron, it's in, the service request is already in progress. I was in communication with our, our Public Works Director, Mr. San, Pal San Palacios, and he mentioned that the request is already on the way. Uh, it's gonna be contracted out to um, provide service at that site. And the electrician was contacted and the, the repair is already in progress. He also mentioned that other pathways, um, maintenance projects are in progress. They're working on, on beautifying the pathways, uh, especially they're, they're concentrating right now in, in the um, entrance of Sunset coming down from San Luis um, close, next to Centennial Park or uh, Paracone Park, I mean, and the canal uh, pathway was recently uh, maintained. Just want to mention the Public Works does a very good job maintaining our pathways. That's something that I can't um, take credit for because we do not maintain the pathways. It's the Public Works Department. And they do an excellent job. I didn't know you've seen that little cart that looks strange, a little truck that's smaller. And that it goes a long way with a small group. And it's just something internal that it was a breakdown due to the areas and the staffing. But they do a pretty good job with, with what they have because they're it's not really their area of expertise. Thank you. Uh, Jesus. I don't have any questions, but... Uh, yeah, thank you, brother. Jesus, this is uh, Commissioner Duran. I was just... Um, uh, I have a comment to say about that. It's like when they start and then when they finish, the weeds are already coming out. Uh, have they thought about uh, spraying 
spraying some some um, weed killer down there because I believe a few years ago they wouldn't do that. Mm. They say it didn't work, and then you guys did it and it worked. Have you guys uh, thought about spraying it down? I believe Mr. Elijah has, has looked into that. It, it's going to most likely be contracted out if okay. it's not going to kill or damage the vegetation. But yeah, he it, it's in their they're reviewing that possibility or option. Yeah, okay. Thank you. And any special area that you have in mind that it needs that? No, well, it's just here, here by the canal, by where it used to be Casa de Gloria. By the time they start and by the time they end, the weeds are already growing back out. It's because right now it's, it's <laughs> yeah. a season. It's a season for them to grow. So, so I was, uh, and I remember last year. I remember seeing that they sprayed it and they were they were dying and they didn't have to cut it down with the weed eaters that much. So I'm just suggesting maybe it, it, for them to spray it, that was some sort of weed killer. Uh, that was just my my two cents. Sure, it's a good point and recommendation. Any further questions? Um, no, no, but I, do, I do have a comment of the on the Cesar Chavez actually. The, they opened the that section in front of the uh, uh, the primary school. Um, wow, I mean, uh, looks looks so great. Uh, I've been actually doing my bicycle, so I'm living along Casa de Gloria, the, the past, and went into that area. It's beautiful, the, the lighting, and I see now that the, uh, the little service stations for the dogs, you know, the, like the plastic bags, now there's, I see that they're more refilled more frequently now uh, in that area, so I don't know about the other areas there, but I just wanted to say that uh, I thought it was the, the, the parks and lakes that were taking that pathway, but um, please pass the word um, to the um, to whoever is doing the maintenance on that because it, it did an awesome job since it's kind of a rebid and re carpet resurface okay, the, the, that area and it looks wonderful. So I was very happy to do my bicycle. Yeah, and it's a, it's a key site I've noticed um, that it's well used, especially the canal pathway. So we're going to take advantage of it and start. Um, Installing some marketing for or upcoming activities, mm -hmm. uh, basically banners and take advantage of that site that's well u utilized. Okay. Those are gonna probably get be out next week. So you, you'll start seeing more publicity and all that for upcoming activities. Any more questions for Mr. Yeah, um, I was gonna comment. I mean, it, it's good that the work order is finally in place. I mean, I think it's been dark for several months now. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate uh, because, I mean, the pads are, are one of the major highlighted items of our community. And yeah. for them to be dark at night doesn't really convey that sense of safety and come and enjoy a nice walk in the evening type of feeling. Uh, and now that the Centennial Park uh, splash pad is opened, it also adds to that uh, I don't want to call it a fear factor, but it's like, am I going to take my kids to the splash pad after it gets dark there? Because I can't really see what's going on. Because uh, it does get dark. The whole Centennial Park is is dark in the evening, and it's unfortunate. I um, mean, uh, but but it's good to hear that it's being, uh, I guess, fixed within uh, hopefully soon by an independent uh, contractor, I should say. Um, one thing too that uh, I noticed as well while riding my bike as well, just like. Uh, Mr. Vasquez, there is uh, the path lights coming in from Somerton uh, are also not working by Pericone Park. It's the path that runs on the north side of the of Highway 95, all the way from the two Somerton Wacom uh, little houses, I guess you could say, which also do not light up and are broken. Um, once again, that kind of goes back to it kind of paints a negative picture as far as the community uh, not being able to upkeep basic items and, and I know it's not of no fault to public works they are doing the best they can with the resources and personnel they have uh, but I'm hoping that these types of items that are brought up do paint that picture for the city that additional resources will be needed in the future uh, if not now already 
because as the community grows and we add more housing developments and and uh, basically growing, the need is going to be there, and and we don't want to discourage our our citizens from enjoying those paths, enjoying a walk out in the evening. Because uh, uh, going back to Commissioner Duran's comments about the weeds, that has always been a major uh, discussion point with those paths. And at, at one point, there were two weed plants uh, that were the size of trees. Uh, that's how rapidly they grew. Uh, we did receive two concerns about those because uh, it was more actually from two avid joggers that used the pass every morning to them it was a safety concern because it did block uh, the ability to observe if anybody was hiding or had any weird uh, I guess nefarious intentions while they were out in the pathway. Uh, but public, uh, public works did go out there and did resolve the issue like within a day or two being brought to their attention. But it's items like that. You know, we, we don't want public works to be playing a cannon mouse game with the weeds. Yeah. If they actually they uh, whack the mole game is a better analogy for it, where they take down one weed here and four pop up over here within the next day or two. It, it kind of defeats the whole purpose. So, but overall, I think it's a major, dis a bigger discussion that needs to be had. Though uh, I think the design of the landscape design of those paths needs to be reevaluated. Uh, but uh, but I'll, I'll leave it at that. I, I know sometimes I get on my soapbox, but it, it's items that do come up all the time from people out in the community that I'm paying taxes for this path to look decrepit, which yeah. is true. You know, I, I'm also a taxpayer, and when I'm out there, I sometimes get disheartened when I see paths that are dirty, there's garbage everywhere. Uh, I, I know there was a discussion with. Uh, People also not picking up after their animals. Uh, that is also a big item that occurs out there. But, uh, but nonetheless, baby steps, as they say, you know, we're moving forward. And as long as we, we keep pushing for these issues to be resolved, I think that'll, that'll at least uh, get some of those items resolved. Uh, but that's, that's all I had. Um, like I said, nothing against public works. Uh, I know they are doing the best that they can to, to keep up with all the responsibilities they have. And they've been doing an outstanding job. We had a proposal um, about yeah. a, com uh, a commercial or, you know, a small little commercial about keeping our park uh, walkways clean. And, and I know that Ms. Um, Francisco and I sat down and we yep. we, wrote, yeah, we wrote down a, a, a script. As a matter of fact, uh, I, will, I will like to discuss this on the new. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's what we have. But I just wanted to say, you know, uh, echoing what else, Mr. Um, Mr. Um, um, Vice Chair Cervantes is saying, um, I have met with um, two council members from the city of San Luis and they have invited us, you know, as a commission to see what they are doing in their, in their also their pathways and so they also, they do have a, uh, a commission also and probably we can see together, we can explore what they have done and what, you know, how they, they are addressing these problems. We may learn from them or maybe they will learn from us. Um, so uh, probably um, um, I will um, um, explore more of this possibility later on to actually meet with other commissioners from different cities too. I think that it's kind of the same problem that, that they have over there. And let's see how they are planning to solve it. Okay, so probably we, we're gonna, I will try to schedule something for at least two of us or three of us to go. Okay, and see, then we can bring this back to our, what we have learned and bring it to, to the table. Okay, because yes, you're right, uh, I've seen, also, because I live nearby the, the Casa de Gloria Highway, which is like Casa de Gloria anymore, whatever we call it, but what's the name of the canal? Campus, uh, campus over here. Anyway, so. Yeah. 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 The permit is already on the way for, for, for that business is already on the way, the works. Mm -hmm. permit. When? Uh, the permit, the process is already ongoing, so it should be in pretty soon. It, just just want to just wanna mention um, regarding the pathways, um, if any resident is connected or um, everybody you know, present here in the meeting, um, the city of Summerton has a a portal, you could say it's for work orders. You can log in into the webpage, uh, cityofsummerton.gov. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see there a section that says work orders, and it's a small little 
order that you fill out the uh, um, internet, and that's going to uh, forward the information to the appropriate individuals to um, follow up on those um, requests. That's something that the community um, needs to take advantage of because um, we are uh, a growing community. The departments are quite limited, and that's meant to have tracking um, purpose and follow-up. And we do get to them at the earliest convenience, but if we don't know of the work orders, we can't really do much about it. Perfect. Um, can we include that link or? Into yeah, um, we'll definitely do the include the link because um, yeah. it is true. I mean, it adds a, a sense of accountability back to the city. Uh, so it can't be said that we didn't know mm, there were yeah. two gigantic wheat trees yeah. growing yeah. in one of the paths. Yeah. Um, because, because uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they can always approach us, but by the time we sometimes are able to get an audience, it's, it's been a few days. Uh, but uh, that'll allow at least also to maybe justify future budget requests for city departments so that it can be shown that oh, yeah. that the need is there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Numbers don't lie, you know. So, and, and like I mentioned uh, a lot to to people, it's like, you know, don't be afraid to voice your concern. That's, that's why uh, commissions like us exist. We are there to serve that as that link. If you, if everything else fails, we can always establish that communication between you and whoever is responsible for the area of concern. Uh, and just like today, uh, I've heard that some individuals, in, actually the community at large, doesn't know that we exist or that they can come in and do the, uh, what's it called, call to the public, or they can voice concerns that are out there. So. I just want to throw that out there is that yes, anybody in the community can come and have a, a call to the public uh, discussion with us. And we will definitely follow up on those items, especially if they believe that their voices aren't being heard through other means. We can definitely help uh, push that up to whoever needs to know. Um, but yeah, we can definitely add the, the community uh, work order uh, link to our page and kind of yes, and, um, publicize it. Yeah, I know all the departments are, are busy, but I mean, it is our obligation and responsibility. We'll, we're glad to serve the community, and um, we prioritize the projects accordingly, depending on the urgent need and the priority level. But all projects are important. I, I know for a fact that Mr. Palacios is an active um, leader of his department, but they have a lot going on. They're taking care of major projects and um, Projects that sometimes over a million dollars in uh, infrastructure and all that. So those uh, are as important, but they're not high priority. But and if they don't really have a, a report, or he did mention that nobody had reported anything regarding the the life um, concerned by Centennial Park. So things can get rolled over if there's no reporting from the community. Because it's not that um, the departments don't want to do their job; it's that they have a lot going on, and and that's the honest um, truth. Well, thank you, Mr. Yeah. for following up. I have no other concerns or comments. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, um, Mr. Duran. Any comments, questions? Uh, no, I don't have any more. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You brought a good point. Okay, and we miss you here. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope next time you are feeling better. Okay. Um, let's move on to the next items here, which is new um, new businesses, but we don't have anything for that. So summer current event and future ag agenda items. I will start. I will start with from my left. And towards my towards my right, oh, from my right towards my left. So, Miss um, uh, Miss Joanna Eisen, what anything for future agenda? Commission um, Chair. Yeah. Uh, just with interrupt. I, I believe the the staff is intended to report the uh, summary first before the. Ah, okay, okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. I missed that for uh, yeah summary events. Okay, Mr. Mesa. Um, uh, I just want to mention that um, the skate park project at Joe Munoz Park is on the way. 
the um, the project schedule was forwarded yesterday, um, May 18th, for the completion of the of the design. Mm -hmm. uh, additional requests were forwarded to the engineering company um, regarding larger bowl addition to it, which is going to be the biggest amenity part of that um, skate park. The basketball court was finished already at Joe Munoz Park. We're looking into the uh, surfacing and striping. That's going to be completed in the next couple of weeks. The hoops are already on. They're professional grade heavy duty hoops. It was a high quality um, project, lower budget, but high impact. I invite anybody, uh, the residents, and everybody here to visit Joe Munoz. The part is very nice. And it's we're looking into adding some type of art and logos in the near future. And it's going to be multi-use for the community, volleyball, basketball, and usable for tennis, also for practices. And that's also going to be a site for uh, other recreational activities like Zumba, things like that. Um, just want to mention that everything's up and running for um, registrations for the summer. We have uh, youth basketball, co-ed softball on Fridays. We have co-ed kickball Wednesdays and Fridays. And we have swimming lessons. That's what we have scheduled for the summer. And we'll, we're going to start um, inviting the public, the residents, the neighboring communities to be part of our programs with um, strong marketing outlets. We, we've done TV, um, newspaper. We're going to go into the radio for the weeks and just try our best to get the word out and people to come out and, and participate. And today, the... 100% update for the HVAC project was forwarded by the NEI engineering company. Our goal and deadline is to complete that project by September because we are already taking reservations for um, any type of event or reservation of the community center, which are mainly social gatherings. So we have to finish that project by September. The design is completed and we're uh, reviewing to forward the final, the final steps to that, to this process. So some four units are coming into the community center. That's going to have a good um, ventilation system and for any type of event. So, uh, reservations are available are available from September and after. Those are some events, and I'll, I'll forward my weekly event, my weekly report. But just want to mention those. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. My, my suggestion is, uh, can we separate the summer current events from future agenda? It's just like a little on the bottom part here. Yeah. You know, you, if you don't mind, and that will signal to me that that, that will be your your time. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, a little sure. space between. Because I, I read the whole thing, and, and that that was that was my mistake on my side. But, but thank you very much for. Sure. And yes, I actually. Um, I went to the, the basketball court at the Joe Munoz. There's a big difference, definitely. There is. But I was like, my question was, uh, what happened to the the surface? You know, because uh, it's all about it, so it's coming soon. Then. Yes. It's gonna be green or just uh, like we're shooting for a gray, probably a fantasy gray, mm -hmm. pink color with white um, striping for basketball and green striping for volleyball. It's gonna stand out the logos and all that and look pink. We're shooting for an epoxy or acrylic sand type of material so it has a good um, surface, mm -hmm. good, good grip for the activity so we avoid further injuries. Since there will be more people attending the Joe Munoz, is, 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 is there any way that we may have a sign, you know, for the upcoming traffic that may say kids at play or something or like? You know, who's, I'm probably, I don't know if it's Parks and Recs or, or who's actually, who may be able to help us, you know, um, because I, I, now that the the, um, the basketball court is, is fence, but there will be now probably some kids playing outside the fence, I don't know, just for so saying at least something that there's kids that play, I mean, there's a park, but Sometimes I wonder why the traffic is so. Yeah, the, normally those signs are placed closer to schools, but mm -hmm. we, we can't look into it. And mm -hmm. there's going to be more traffic with the skate park coming in, the court, 
Um, we're proposing a turf soccer next to the court. Mm -hmm. There's going to be more amenities to it. And another commercial, we're, we're opening the senior center on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Full capacity, um, you're able to accommodate, so the, so the senior center is going to be open. It's open for residents um, 60 and over. So back they will be able to go back and, and enjoy yes, the their center. meals, and mm -hmm. we're doing a welcome back activity for them. I have a question, uh, yes. Director. Mesa, and, and so you mentioned a, a project that is going to be done by September, and it seems like the only thing I'm not aware of, but it's, I'm interested in knowing just a little bit more. Or if you it's the AC, the air conditioning system. We've uh -huh. never had an AC unit. Um, the community center, which is our gym next to our pool, in the entrance of Somerton. Okay. Now it's going to have an AC um, system. It's going to be brand new. And we're working on the design because it needs to be the electrical calculations and loads and all that. So it's well, so it's a project that's well done and engineered. Okay, so it's going to be available, available for community events? Yeah, we're actually okay. taking already reservations for after September. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. And pretty good prices. <laughs> yeah, we remodeled the gym, we remodeled the gym just recently, so it looks a lot better. And definitely, I remember, um, geez, I mean, when I was a city council many years ago, we were trying, we were trying to actually get the AC system. And geez, this process has been a very slow. I'm glad that finally, after 10 years, I mean, the, the AC will. You know, the credit has been a work in progress for many administrations. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, when I when I see it, I'll believe it. Oh, it's I want to believe it. It's approved. Uh, so let's push a little bit from our side as commission to get it done. Yeah, <laughs> the interior looks a lot better too. Yes, definitely. Was <laughs> I'm glad also the, the senior citizen, you know, reopening. They, it was a needed service. It was kind of a hard to deliver the food. I volunteer once, and, uh, but they needed. They they really needed that. That socialization. So I hope it goes back to uh, normality very soon. Yes. Thank you for sharing the good news. Um, I have two questions. One um, for two different items. Um, for the basketball court, are the hoops, I, I guess, at the proper height? Because they look kind of kind of short. <laughs> or something looks off with the hoops. Maybe it's the the way they're being stood up or um, yeah, we measured the hoops. We can double check the dirt or ten feet. Okay. It's just that the structure is like heavy duty grade, uh -huh. so it makes it look a little bit smaller. Yeah, and that's right. Touching the rim. Like oh, looking at it, I was like, that kind of seems pretty really short. It reminded me of the the basketball hoops for uh, an elementary school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like where they're kind of <laughs> lower. Yeah, no, you think they're, they're lower though. But uh, okay, no, no, just a, a question there. And then the other one is. Uh, <laughs> Um, do we have a tentative date of when the pool is scheduled to open? The pool is already up and running. The guards, that's a good point. They're being trained. We have certified guards already um, trained. WSIs, which are water safety instructors for swimming lessons. They're ready to go. Um, our first event is going to be a pool reservation by summer to summer middle, middle school on Tuesday. School. Mm -hmm. and so we're ready to accommodate for that. Respecting. To bring at least a lot of kids. Bread. Yes, a lot of kids. <laughs> so let's see how it goes. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, those are the only two follow ups. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, Vice Chair, maybe you actually uh, get confused with the fence, <laughs> the, the fence there is on the, on the basketball court. I also noted the same thing, but I tried to listen. Yeah, I think it's a little. So. So I was not the only one. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah. check if they're lower than the 10 feet regulation. We'll adjust them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Now let's let's um, move on to future agenda items. I, I have two items, but first, let's start from my left side. Ms. Uh, Secretary Joanna Ezra. I do want a petition for like a, a recorder for our meetings, like a note taker that can um, help with taking notes that can transfer for the uh, meeting that secretary can edit and put together because it's hard to participate and have to take notes at the same time. 
So, um, so I want to petition for that and see what everyone else thinks. Ms. So to Ms. Commission Secretary, so the meetings are recorded on, on YouTube. That's something that's being um, monitored by IT. So they are um, pre-recorded and the um, links are available. I can just coordinate with IT to be able to view the meetings. I'm wondering if someone can actually like script, like note take. Oh, note take. It. Yeah, so that can be transferred into the meeting. Yeah. Group. Because it's very, you know, what well, to to do that? Like right now, it's it, it's really difficult. Yes. Um, and then um, I think it it would be more um effective, effective that way. I think both council meet or not council, but you know, meetings like ours um do have a system for that. And I thought I was I was wanting to bring it up to to our group here. Yeah, no. Um... For the Yuma County, we do have in the library, the library board, board of trustees, we do have someone who specifically actually takes the, the notes for that, even though we're being recorded. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking, um, I don't know if we can, uh, you know, the, the commission by itself can pay it, you know, just for one hour, two hours, someone, you know, uh, uh, just to help us with the notes. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> we, the, the, my, my goal is to actually uh, have those those uh, those done uh, in a monthly, you know, for each meeting. Um, by request of the city council, they want to have this done, and I don't see a problem with that. Um, and the, in the past, we didn't have the funds, and I think now, little by little, somehow we're getting a little bit more funding, and and um, that's one idea for maybe a discussion of the, for the next item to see how can we solve this problem. Maybe because I understand the position that she's having, you know, trying to be in both sides. And it would be very helpful to have just one, you know, a person. You know, and I know, for example, in my school, I, I know someone that actually, I don't know if she types faster with, uh, that she talks, but she doesn't. Sometimes she's talking to me and she's like, what are you doing? Everything really, really, really fast. You know, maybe something like that. I don't know, but um, yeah. Can you put on the, 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 the let's explore this possible and add it to the agenda too. And the agenda just to explore to discuss. It. Yes, please. Anything else? No. Oh yes. Oh, you're going to talk about it, right? The one that's the commercial with that. Yes, yes, yes. Go for it. Oh, well, you're okay. Um, or newest. <laughs> well, well, I am learning right now, and I don't have any proposals, but you know, I've heard many uh, interesting ideas that I will follow up on, and so that I can make you know meaningful contribution to this conversation. But at this moment, I am just listening. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the listening mode. And uh, Mr. Uh, Juan Dugan? I uh, can't think of anything. If I do, I'll um, email Jesus. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And why share Cervantes? You always have something, so. Um, <laughs> yes, actually, um, I don't know if it would really be us or not, but, but maybe... Um, also, in the sense of the overall bigger picture of things, I know uh, community economic development uh, does a lot of videos. Uh, I know the last one they did was for the, the argument at the 8550. Um, audio was kind of hard to hear. Maybe we can look at maybe investing in a, a proper mic setup that can be attached to a phone and the cameras, and that'll be dual use for our needs when we do our community items and of course when they do the community event items as well. I don't know if maybe they do have one, but uh, sometimes the, the remote videos they do, uh, hearing, you can't really hear what's being said. And this is not where the mask, this is just without the mask, where it sounds like, like this is where you can't really hear. Uh, whereas if there was a mic attached, 
it'll actually make it easier for people to understand what's being said. So maybe add that as a discussion to see maybe there's some equipment we can look at as well for for future um, productions of our, our, our uh, community engagement items. Because um, uh, uh, that, that, that kind of comes up from time to time where it's really hard to, to hear, especially when it's a remote that's being done. When it's here in the office, it's more controllable because there's no traffic and uh, there's no nature to kind of come up. Uh, but, but yeah, we can maybe have a quick discussion on that to see what options are out there. And that could also play with uh, the the voice to text solution that we, we may also look at. So, oh yeah. Um, but no, that's all I had. I don't have any other other items to to discuss. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, well, the, um, the, uh, you kind of mentioned it, the, the 85350 activity that is coming up this coming uh, Saturday, the R evening, evening R event. Is, is this this Saturday no, or? No. 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 The 85350 event is this yeah. coming Saturday, yeah. isn't it? Oh, yeah, you're right. It is this Saturday. Yeah, the, over the 20th, what is it? 22nd. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think so. So just, you know, because that brings me to the next item. Okay, um, I was talking to our, the uh, Budweiser uh, uh, Romer Beverage of Yuma, and I, I spoke to the team leader, David Duran, and, and um, um, we were actually, the funny thing is, um, we were having kind of the same conversation, but each of us from their own side, and then when we hear each other say, you know what, I think this idea is, is, is going to be great for summer. And, um, um, the, uh, the wine tasting and, and uh, or the art, okay, yeah. combining, you know, uh, um, maybe spirits, I mean, uh, in, uh, in beer or, you know, drafting. So he's willing to do a presentation for us, uh, you know, and what he has seen as actually other cities like Yuma doing. And they said that this activity has been very, have been very, very successful. Phoenix, actually, the, the big cities are doing it more often. The Yuma is a little bit behind, so you can imagine that summer today is way behind Yuma in, in this matter. So, because I was, um, you know, I, when I talk when I talk to him, I, I say, you know, I would like to do something like this, and and I've been actually exploring the possibility to have a, a the art and the wine tasting. I said, guess what? Uh, I maybe I can help you with that. Uh, you know, um, very little cost, cost involved, uh, sponsors and things like that. So uh, I would like to invite him for our next uh, meeting. So um, if um, or uh, or Romer Beverage of Yuma to do a little presentation about the benefits we're having on art and uh, uh, wine tasting. And now that you mentioned that the that the um, the um, our uh, building will have AC finally by by uh, September. The you know the civic center. Um, so maybe we can we can actually do something right there. You know, in a bit that that's gonna be running and fresh. Um, maybe in October. Who knows? But let's discuss this more because the opportunity is there. And and uh, he was wondering. Uh, why we haven't done it in the past so it's well it is always a first time for something so that was my one of the items and the second one is that um miss uh yes can you just state the name of, of the person that yes you? yes uh, his name is actually david duran he's a team leader for romer beverage of yuma and mr mesa is very familiar with him because he's the one who, uh, who was the contact was it you or or uh Reason. Reason. Oh, reason. Yeah, I think so he has uh, all the information that we need from him. So, and he gave me his business card so to do a presentation. So that would be great. Mm -hmm. it wouldn't, we don't have to take any action, but it's, it's, let's start exploring the possibility to have something like that and to support the arts, the arts program in the city. And talking about the arts, um, I didn't know that Ms. Uh, Joanna also has some uh, art experience in, <laughs> in video making. So we sat together and uh, we started exploring and we even write a script for uh, Keep in Summerton, Keep in Summer, Keep the Pathways Food Free. 
We're basically kind of a, that's the title that we, we came up with. And uh, for next item agenda, we'd like to actually put it at the end there. And this time we're gonna be prepared with, now like the split, now that we have a new member, and I, uh, she said that she would like to um, um, discuss about like things that people can use, so they don't use their hands to pick up the poop. And that can be like, you know, a little tiny part of the presentation. So everyone, we have something for Jesus. In my belief, your role will be in safety, or we already have something there that based on the private conversation, and once I present this to all of you, if you like the split, then we can move on with the production of it so we can have it ready by either by July. I was thinking of uh, June, but it will not be possible by July. Yes, please. And uh, I think it's a great idea. And now I see this more more doable. So maybe another city will, cop will copy or, or video and we're going to be getting famous anyway. So. so those two items at this moment, please. And obviously, uh, let's let's um, put in the agenda the the um, um, for possible discussion and in, in, um, um, in the consent agenda. Her petition, please. Yeah, I have a content. Got it. Okay. And. Um, for the good of the order, any good thing that you saw around the city? Anything good or concern? No. I think we discussed a lot today. Oh, you discussed a lot today, okay. A lot. So dinner time then? I have a, a short comment about something left. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were studying um, weather forecasting in my science class. I'm a middle school science teacher. And I just want to say that that uh, air quality flag that this the committee put in at Council Park came up, and you know it, it felt good to explain that you know the city cares about letting the the people know about air quality. Um, so you know that's a good thing that I, I share. I have to reinforce that as a former teacher in the classroom as well, that education is so essential to connect community mm -hmm. learning into education and reason. So I love that you said that just to say that. So kudos to you. Yeah, but I brought that to also to my students in, uh, in class. And, and I know that the now um, Mr. Um, uh, <laughs> Mr. Cervantes and I were not pretty much having the same, the same flag and now there is, because we're following now the, he told me about the application, I downloaded it, and uh, based on this, um, I'm changing the flag, and I, they said, uh, I noticed one pattern, you notice that on Sundays, they have, most of the time it's green, but Monday to Friday, it's actually yellow. And why is that? Is because our city is growing, and the city of Yuma is also growing, so, Sometimes the wind switch and I guess the particles actually move into this area. And uh, but I'm seeing more consistency. So I hope also the CD, the flag that is over there will be consistent with ours in Joe Munoz and as well as of the council park. I want to give another kudos mm -hmm. to the Susan because he's the one that processed that idea and to um, to the city of Summerton through the commission. So I just, you know, I just love to see like the full circle coming and how now we have educators educating mm -hmm. our children, of, you know, using something that, you know, that one of our commissioners, you know, worked hard to bring to the table. So it's just exciting that time. Yeah, and uh, to touch on that real quick, um, as, as a general note, um, I know sometimes uh, the weather report or the, the flag says it's, is green, but um, if you look at the ozone levels, uh, the ozone levels sometimes call for a moderate flag. Uh, so it's not purely based on particle count, um, only because they came up in a discussion I had with somebody uh, that also has a flag program in the county. So um, we do have kind of a wiggle room to which flag can be flown based on that. So, uh, but no, uh, but ultimately, I mean, we've been in, in uh, consistent with our flags across the board. And, uh, Unfortunately, 
the past couple of days, it's been under moderate. It's either wind that's uh, kind of brought up uh, the particle count or the ozone layer, uh, like today. Uh, today was a red flag day uh, for the National Weather Service. Uh, it did impact uh, the particle count and ozone. Uh, and then, of course, there, prior to that, we had the fire on the Colorado River, which also impacted our air quality. So there's tons of factors that come into play. Um, but I just wanted to throw that out there that sometimes the flags are based on, on local conditions as well, not specifically just from uh, forecast out of Phoenix. Mm -hmm. so. No, and also the, I noticed um, I was actually changing the, the flag from, uh, the, uh, from orange to green. And then around 10 in the morning, just by curiosity, I actually checked. And if they actually sent back that it was actually now back to uh, back to uh, 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 yellow flag. I mean, um, it was I was changing the flag from yellow to to green. It's because it was it, it was predicted green, and then two hours later it became yellow again. So I went back and I changed it myself, and then the following day it came back to green, which is when I weekend, and then but later on it became actually yellow again. So this. This whole week actually has been nothing but, but yellow. Okay. And then we have the little, locally we have the, also the fire that broke around 10 in the morning, 10.30 in the south. So part of the city, I don't know if you know, there was big, big amounts of uh, smoke coming up. Um, yes, so you're right, also local events may affect. But, but um, the good thing is when people ask us about it, number one, we're doing it for, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, uh, there may be some cases of uh, asthma, and, and people have to be aware that we're trying to help them. You know what? When when they see the yellow flag, is they have to. Um, it is okay to play, but not for too long, because it may trigger. So when you see the red flag, it means, it means caution or try to avoid outdoor activities. And we do have different colors that you know. Um, uh, we we do explain them through our official web page. Uh, the, what is the meaning of that and what to do, what not to do that. So I give it my fingers crossed that we never put the purple, what is the blue purple flag? Um, <clears throat> there would be the red one, which would be extreme. Um, I mean, but there's uh, one at that point, after it. Yeah. Uh, that point, yeah, there would be yeah, yeah. nobody should be watching yeah. outside. But. Okay. Chair, um, just want to mention that there's job opportunities right now opening for the public residents, especially for high school age um, teenagers. We're looking for five recreational aids to assist with um, activities in the summer. This is going to be a program for opening up five positions and then three more for um, anybody ages 16 and up, 19 and up, um, excuse me, for recreation aids. There are going to be attendance for the events, reservations, um, social gatherings at the facilities. Also, one position um, is going to be part time for facility management, facility uh, maintenance, and contractual positions for like umps, uh, scorekeepers, um, referees for the youth basketball. I put that out there. Oh, that's good to know. Um, I'll take this for further details or uh, the city website. Well, thank you. I you know some. I know some, some of them may benefit from this, so thank you very much for sharing that. Okay, I promise our secretary that we're going to be we're going to be going home early this time. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the air quality. Um, anything else? Uh, Commissioner Duran? For the good of the order? No, I got nothing. No. Thank you. No, thank you. You're very well. Okay. Any of you? No? Okay. It is right now 722. I call this meeting adjourned.